Hey, what's up, everyone? Today, we're going to talk about Jameis Winston and how he went from a Heisman Trophy National Championship number one overall pick to being a third string backup in the NFL. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. It helps me out a lot. Jameis Winston was born in Bessemer, Alabama, where he grew up living with six other members of his family in a single room. He had humble beginnings and looked for an avenue to a better life, however, he didn't let this discourage him, as Jameis looked to football as a way out. He played football for Hueytown High School, where he played both football and baseball. As a junior in high school, he was named the Gatorade Player of the Year for the state of Alabama and led his school to a state championship as a junior. He passed for 2,334 yards with 17 touchdowns as well as 870 rushing yards and 9 more touchdowns. As a senior, he passed for 2,424 yards with 28 touchdowns and 1,065 yards rushing with another 15 touchdowns. This had him rated as the best dual threat quarterback in the entire nation and the best overall quarterback recruit. He was even named the MVP of the ESPN Elite 11. He was also incredible at baseball and was actually considered a top baseball prospect in the 2012 Major League Baseball Amateur Draft. Jameis was a superb athlete, but he already knew which school he was going to attend all along. He signed with the Florida State Seminoles for the class of 2012. It was somewhere he always wanted to play and finally was able to have a better life and move on to better things from his past. So he would mainly choose to play football for the Seminoles, but he did play a little bit of baseball as well. Jameis redshirted his freshman year, but as a redshirt freshman in 2013, he took over as the starter. Where as a freshman, he ended up passing for 4,057 yards, 40 touchdowns on 67% passing. With another 193 yards rushing with 5 more touchdowns, he led the Seminoles to a perfect 14-0 record leading them to a national championship victory over the Auburn Tigers. Jameis was then named the 2013 ACC Player of the Year as well as the AP Player of the Year and most of all won the Heisman Trophy as a redshirt freshman. He was the youngest ever player to win the Heisman. He was on top of the world and many people thought he would be the next all-decade quarterback, the next can't-miss prospect. Going into his redshirt sophomore season, Winston began to have some trouble. This is something that unfortunately would start to come up again and again and again in his career. From 2012 to 2015, Jameis was charged for damaging a complex with BB guns, accused of sexual assault, accused of stealing soda from a Burger King, suspended from the Florida State baseball team after stealing crab legs, and served a one-game suspension for the football team for jumping on a table at school and yelling vulgar remarks. Yeah, that's a lot of drama caused by one player and it really started to overshadow how great of a player he was. As most of the time when people were talking about Jameis, they were talking about all this stuff off the field. But back to on the field, during his redshirt sophomore season, he would pass for 3,907 yards on 65% passing with 25 touchdowns. But he also had 18 interceptions. This was new for Winston during his football career and as we would unfortunately come to see, this would become a theme for his NFL career. Still in his second year, the Seminoles finished the regular season 13-0, but lost to the Oregon Ducks in the college football playoff semifinal game 59-20. However, due to his first year, his national championship year, and with his leadership abilities, the way his teammates loved him, many scouts really didn't care about his high turnover season or even the drama so much. So Jameis would enter the NFL Draft after playing just two college seasons. In the 2015 NFL Draft, Jameis was selected as the first overall pick by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jameis would be named the starter as a rookie and would go on to start all 16 games. As a rookie, he would pass for 4,042 yards on 58% completions with 22 touchdowns but 15 interceptions. Overall, he would lead the Buccaneers to a 6-10 record, but he showed a lot of promise and was able to put up pretty decent numbers. But the following year, he would take a huge step up in his best NFL season. In his second year in the league for the 2016 season, Jameis would pass for 4,090 yards with 28 touchdowns 
But again, he did have huge turnover numbers with 18 interceptions and 4 fumbles lost. However, he did lead the Buccaneers to a 9-7 record and on the verge of a playoff berth. The hype was getting big for Jameis and the Buccaneers, and it looked like they were about to take the next step up as a team. However, in the next season in 2017, Jameis only played in 13 games, passing for 3,504 yards, for 19 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, completing 64% of his passes. In the games that he started, he led them to a 3-10 record. He did, however, become the second youngest player in NFL history to reach the 10,000 career passing yard mark. Coming off a struggling year, however, things were looking pretty shaky, but the Buccaneers still picked up Winston's option on his contract going into the 2019 season. However, before the 2018 season, he had more drama as he was accused by an Uber driver for groping her. This led to a three-game suspension, and he also struggled with some injuries and ended up playing in just 11 games in 2018, leading the Buccaneers to just a 3-6 record. He passed for 2,992 yards with 19 touchdowns, but 14 interceptions. He was even benched for Ryan Fitzpatrick twice during the season. At this point, he was just becoming a turnover-prone quarterback, and most people around the league associated him with that. No one really talked about his talent or potential anymore, all you really ever heard was how much of a turnover machine he was and people laughing about it. Starting the 2019 season in Winston's final year of his contract, head coach Derek Cutter was fired and replaced by Bruce Arians in Tampa Bay. Jameis would actually play in all 16 games this year and saw his highest passing yards and touchdowns in his career. Now going into his final year, Jameis needed to show the organization that he is their franchise quarterback and that he was worthy of a long term contract. Now to do this, he would end up passing for 5,109 yards with 33 touchdowns. Great, right? Yes, but he also passed for 30 interceptions. 3-0. I repeat, 30 interceptions in 2019. He had so many games where he passed for a lot of yards, but would throw interceptions in close games that would directly lead to losses. Stint flips it out. Oh, and it's intercepted! It's another interception. This one taken by three points scored. And the entire half. An interception for a touchdown. Big key was bringing in Todd Bowles. Here's one deep and caught. The team was up and down through the year, but fell short of the playoffs and again finished the season with a 7-9 record. This was the final year of James's contract, and despite breaking some passing records, having huge yardage games, and some good touchdowns, his turnovers came to define his overall play. He played well enough to win some games, but he also had insanely questionable throws that led to game-losing turnovers. Watching Winston in the NFL is such a weird thing. You can see that he's charismatic, his teammates love him, and at times he throws with incredible accuracy and power. At times he looks like a top 10 franchise quarterback. Then other times he makes plays that make you shake your head and make him look like one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Because of this, and the Bucks signing legendary quarterback Tom Brady, Winston, and the Bucks moved on from each other. The Jameis Winston Tampa Bay experiment was over. This led to Jameis signing a one year, $1.1 million contract with the New Orleans Saints to be a backup to Drew Brees. Wait. As Hill sets, throws, end zone, touchdown! Traquan Smith, and that is the first passing touchdown for Taysom Hill in his NFL career. Oh right, he isn't the backup, he's the third string backup. That's right, despite all of his talent and even the players in the Saints locker room loving him, Jameis was moved to third on the depth chart behind Taysom Hill. Drew Brees was injured in the 2020 season and had to miss a few games, and while many thought Jameis would step in, it was actually Taysom. Now it's starting to look like Taysom Hill is the future quarterback for the Saints after Brees moves on. Where does this leave Jameis now? As of this video, it looks like he's going to finish as the third string quarterback and his deal was only for one year and expires at the end of the season, so what is he going to do? If you've watched Jameis at all, you can see on film how talented he is. And that's why it's so frustrating when you see him make turnovers. He takes too many risks and at times seemingly throws it up for grabs when it's not even necessary. When I look at Jameis Winston, I definitely see some of those Brett Favre vibes where he just tosses it up and has huge turnover seasons. I think Jameis has all of the talent in the world to be a quality starting quarterback in this league who can make Pro Bowls. 
but can the right coach help him finally fix his decision making? I mean, he's just 26 years old, guys, and he's shown that he can play at the highest and lowest level of NFL quarterback play. I really don't know the solution besides Jameis in his own head. Mentally, he's got to fix his decision making. He has to make better decisions on the field. Let me know in the comments down below, everyone. What in the world does Jameis do now? Let me know what you think he should do. What team in the league will give him another chance? And more importantly, what team in the league will give him a starting quarterback chance? Again, even despite the turnovers, I think because of the talent we've seen in Jameis in the next two seasons, he will get a starting role, at least a chance at one. But I can't really see where as of right now. I'm not really sure. He's so talented and if the right team can help quote unquote fix his decision making, they would have a franchise quarterback on their hands. I wish the best to Jameis and I hope he can improve and return to the elite level that we've seen him play at at times. Jameis was quoted as saying after his 30 interception season, I'm the best in the league without the interceptions. While I wouldn't go that far, Jameis, I do think that without the interceptions, you would be a top 10 quarterback in the league. But he's going to have to find out what it will take to get there. Again, guys, it's all in the head. We've seen him make amazing decisions and poor decisions. I've talked about it on my channel before about bipolar quarterbacks, bipolar players on the field, and Jameis is the perfect example of that. At times, he looks like the greatest, and at times, he looks like the worst. <laughs> But is Jameis going to be able to figure it out? If he doesn't, he's just going to be another quarterback that wasted his potential. But if he does figure it out, we're going to see an epic comeback. And I think one of the better players and quarterbacks we've seen in a while. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to see even more videos like this in the future. Let me know down in the comments below who you want me to talk about next. What do you all think about Jameis? He's been through so much drama in his short career, as well as the whole turnover problem. Is it too late to save his career, or is he just getting started? Let me know, guys. I think and hope that Jameis will be back as a starting quarterback soon. And if he fixes his turnovers, look out.